often find beauty in women who have a strong political statement in terms of like what I depicted in university, some progressive ideas. Women who represent the idea of a global betterment without getting personally attached with that. And those usually have no fashion global clothing on and no makeup either. And their hair is just whatever. I find this incredibly uh, enticing as a person bringing worse to the human race onto the planet. Someone who deconstructs herself to find newer meaning for betterment, not someone who intends to paintbrush herself something on in order to be liked by other people around her or at any place. Someone who looks at stuff, not at herself or how do other people react with her, but how does the stuff react with other people? How our social political condition affect our environment? There I can find beauty. Anyone who's just into the vanity of outer beauty is never beautiful to me ever. So Edith must have had something that she caught my something, right? <laughs> no. I think I think it was just a physical thing that she had like amazingly physical maybe Fibonacci factions in her face. I don't even know why that's of the matter. <laughs> because of the attraction. It's just it's just an attraction to beauty because I, you know I'm not in nothing to do with like being into anybody at all. Just you know like a great painting or. I don't remember ever have had that before. I had to look into my archives. I don't know why it's still memorable because maybe it make me too. Maybe because of what if? No, I saw her afterwards once on TV. I don't know how I even arrived there. And I don't know long, long before. I had a clear a notion that it wasn't her idea. It was someone else who said, oh my, you gotta go. Give it a shot. And she said, no, I'm shy. I don't want to. She would probably not have said she's shy. She would have just said, nah, I don't know how to do that. Or like giggle, ha 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 no. Come on, and she did that. She felt incredibly uncomfortable in front of the camera, which makes no sense to me. Again, I don't know her history. I have no clue where she came from, but what her idea is. I have no idea. She could have just sat and talked about it, right? No big deal, but that's just me. Maybe she had some harsh going on in her life, right? That's, I don't know. I, why do I even have to look at that? I don't want to speculate. I'm not interested in that. That's all I'm gone. I don't understand. I wasn't interested in her. <laughs> Medium. Okay, Medium was like this star student. She was apart from anybody else. She passed the exam for becoming a diploma, which is extremely hard. Extremely hard. I heard. Yeah, these friends I had, uh, friends, you know, short acquaintance, these three guys from UNAM who went then becoming diplomats outside Mexico. Those two had the same exam and Miriam, that was her goal, her life purpose. And she excelled like she usually and she looked very indigenous. So she had like a triple challenge going on for herself. She was always working in light makeup. And that's just a symbol, just like I did of not feeling secure about yourself, not liking yourself much, still wanting to be appropriate and measure yourself in the society you are in, and do the best you can in the physical where you fit in, although there's so much more going on, but you are going to be respectful with yourself. So her affirming stuff because she was into Chomsky and important important matters in her materia in her subjects very important she's got that idea going on and she was well she was an outsider enough in society to think that she would gain any any recognition from anybody because of her person because of her status which is a lot in my world but nothing for those and that's her father was a very important person in one of the editorials from Mexico who actually printed the, the rich books the good books 
the inside pro box and had a very strong political view, social consciousness. As she said, I never met him. That brings her to the level of like the only race in Mexico I'm actually interested in to even be with. She did lift up to his expectations though in my world. I mean, what she described him, she had, she did, I don't know, something she couldn't grasp inside herself. Maybe she felt too diminished to actually be that generous to think about other people's well-being. Because she was very indigenous looking and short and and people respected what she did, but nothing else. But without that, she would have been overlooked as someone who sells tortillas on the street. And that's a bad thing in Mexico for social, you know, businesses. Well, what is a friend? Not really. I mean, barely. See, hi, how are you doing? How are you doing? But she was the one who was like, I don't know, stuck with me. I think I was like the only person she actually had conversation with sometime. Everybody looked at her like the outsider because she was the right student. She had all her time to, to do that. Well, others would not have that time, but they would not spend all their time doing that like she did. She would spend all her time studying. And I didn't have all my time. I had to work too. I had to travel so many hours on, in traffic from a different city. My aim was not what her aim was. My aim wasn't to become a best student. I definitely see for me all that what she had in her mind was out of the question because I cannot become a diplomat in Mexico being German. If I wish to become a diplomat like then I had to go to Europe, I had to go back to Germany and from there they would hire me. And that was a little bit the idea I had when I stayed in France. Uh, when I wanted to uh, sacrifice my well-being by actually adding two more years to end up my studies there instead of Mexico. And then get a job in the European community and then go back to Mexico with a job in hand. That could have been an option, but it didn't happen. So I never aimed for being the best student. I never really worried about any of that. I was, but I didn't really thought about becoming a... See, for me, it's just an endeavor to do things right. I had nobody who pressured me about it. Only once I got pressure, and that was in eighth grade. When I stopped studying altogether, I threw everything down. It's like I was absent. Bam. So a teacher told me, you do that next uh, at the end of this next semester, you're going to be repeating. Is that what you really want? Like, you can do better. Of course I can do better. And my mother, stepmother, she said, oh, it's up to you. It's your life. I was terrified just to think about that. I was already so mature all the time, not with babies, and that, that just didn't fit into my thing. So I had to kind of pull my act together. I had a few months of rebellious attitude, yes. I was fighting with everyone, me. <laughs> next next year I was president of the school, and then I had a bath, and then I did blah, blah, whatever. I did a lot of things. <clears throat> it was just a choice. I was traumatized at the moment. I was, It was devastated emotionally, that's what it was. Uh, I didn't mind if I had like my social consciousness is so strong that I didn't mind to fight with history teachers when I was in agreement but yeah on detriment of my grade probably I mean once I had a traumatized idiot, idiot who was totally mean it was unfair but other times I had I mean history teachers they were always like my nemesis, fuck that shit. Enemy, maybe. But I had my mouth, my mouth wide open, I didn't mind. So they gave me less of a qualification. Maybe, probably, I don't remember. That doesn't matter. What mattered was that I had to say something. And so I did. Yeah, think about it. <clears throat> I said it eat had food, and I'm pretty sure she looked like that. They're, they're, it's a type. They always have good skin. Their clothes is clean. You can see they're clean. And they don't heat up their food. Over. You see what I mean? They have like all these little things that every child should have. They look different. They're not worried if they're going to... And I was always worried. I was worried to pay my rent. I was worried to have a job. I was worried to even eat for lo for years on end. I didn't have a mother, I didn't have a father, I didn't have siblings. 
I barely had a car when I needed one and that was almost almost falling apart. I did not have child's insurance. I didn't have anything. I had no one to count on, like all my life. <clears throat> and look how it turned out. <laughs>